Hello, 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 everybody. And we've uh, finally arrived. We're at question 25, the very last question on the grade 7 guest paper for the year 2002. It's been a great contest so far. Hopefully you've joined me in some of the previous videos. And certainly, hopefully, you've tried the contest uh, for yourself before you watched any of these videos. Just to see where you're, actu uh, where you're actually at, what, what level you're actually uh, um, competing at. So you can see if you have improvement or if you're ready to go for this year's contest. But as I say, we're up to question 25, the very last one, the last question in part C. This should be the hardest contest uh, question. So let's dive in and take a look at it. All right. So question 25. Ooh, I can't even scroll down any farther. That's how final this is. All right. Each of the integers, uh, 226 and 318, have digits whose product is 24. Okay. 2 times 2 is 4, times 6 is 24. 3 times 1 times 8 is also 24. How many three-digit positive integers okay, uh, have digits whose product is 24? Now, the wording here uh, is not as sensitive as it is if you were to do maybe another year's contest or, more importantly, an upper year contest. So we say three-digit positive integers. Typically, that means you can't have a zero as your first digit. I mean, then, then it'd be a two-digit or a one-digit number. And the positive means we can't throw in a minus sign. Okay? But, of course, that should make sense. Minus 318, should, that should be minus 3 times 1 times 8. And that's negative 24, not 24. Um, but uh, even if you thought that minus uh, is a negative 318, you should just count the digits individually, 3, 1, 8. We're at least uh, throwing out all those possibilities. So only positive and no leading zeros. Of course, if we were to allow leading zeros, that wouldn't change anything. Because if we had a three-digit number starting with zero, the product of its digits, I don't care what the other two are, that uh, first zero makes the whole product zero, and that'll never be 24. Okay? But it's careful. It, it's a good idea to be careful about the wording of questions, especially if you're going to continue on. Grade 7, that's the other base level contest. They uh, certainly do get a little trickier. Pascal, Cayley, and Fermat in the high school level contests. Okay? So, let's take a look uh, at it. So we've got two examples that they actually give us. 226 and 318. So these are nice examples. Uh, I wonder, are the other ones just going to be a rearrangements of these digits? So, for example, I, gotta, I have 318. I could have 138. That's a three-digit uh, number, and it's so 1 times 3 times 8 would still give me 24. Are there any possibi are there possibilities? Okay. So this question looks like it's going to be, can we make a list of possibilities and uh, get every single three-digit number we want out of here? Okay. So, so we have a three-digit number, let's call him A, B, C, where each of these is a digit. So that means uh, A, B, and C, well, these guys are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So these are the possibilities. You can't have a single digit be a 10, or, you know, in this case, a 12 would probably be pretty helpful. Okay? You can't have anything like that. Okay? So our three digits are only going to be through 0 through 9. Now, first thing we notice, I already mentioned it, can't have 0. No 0, or the product will be 0. Okay. So another thing I notice, I want A times B times C to be 24. Okay. So A, B, and C must be 
single digit factors of 24. Right? So this would, for example, rule out the number 7. Right? If A is 7, I don't care what B and C are, the product will be a multiple of 7. But 24 is supposed to be the product, and 24 is not a multiple of 7. Okay? So which one of these, uh, which, which of these are, actually are? Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, factors of 24. So the 5 doesn't work, the 7 doesn't work, and the 9 doesn't work. But 8, yeah, that's a factor of 24. 6, yeah, 4, 3, 2, 1. So already we've refined our selection of digits to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. Okay? Now if we had enough spare time, we could probably just try all the combinations here. All right. Uh, so we could say, you know, uh, pick them at random. 1, 3, 6. Does that, does that multiply to be 24? Oh, no, it doesn't. How about uh, 1, 4, 6? Uh, yeah, 1, 4, 8. No. But uh, we could try and be a little smarter about it. What we could do is say, well, what if A was 1? You know, what could the other digits be? So it's always a good idea when you're doing a question where you have to make lists to make your lists in such a way that uh, it's methodical. You know what you're doing at each step. Everything fo flows logically and there are no gaps. OK, if we just start picking things willy nilly, uh, you know, picking random uh, sets of three digits there, then we could potentially miss one. You know, we're human. We make errors. So a good idea is to go through this methodically. So suppose one of the digits was 1 and work out what the other digits could be. Then say, suppose one of the digits was 2, then 3, then 4. So we move through it in a very logical fashion, smallest to largest. You can go through it another way, largest to smallest, that's fine too. But this way we ensure that we don't miss anything. And that's really key to a question like this, because I bet you if you miscount, that's probably one of the, uh, the potential answers, one of the, the potential five answers. Okay. So what if A was one? Okay. Well, then we'd have to have BC is equal to 24. Okay. So then we ask ourselves, well, could B be one? Well, no, because then C would have to be 24, and that wouldn't work. Could B be two? Nah, C would have to be 12. That's still too big. How about B is 3? And then we'd have to have C is 8. Okay. Uh, if B were 4, you know what? We're, we're actually going to write out our failures just so we can make sure that we have definitely covered everything. Okay. So if B equal 1, then C is equal to 24, B is 2, C is 12. If B is 3, that means C is 8. If B is 4, then that means C is 6. If B is 6, then that means C is 4. And if B is 8, uh, then that means that C will have to be 24 divided by 8, so it'll have to be 3. So these two can't happen because we said that each of these have to be single digits, so C can only be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 8. But these other possibilities, they work out really nicely. So we'd have 138, 146, 164, and 183. And we can check. Each of these actually has the property that we want. Three-digit positive number, and each of the digits multiplied together gives us 24. So that's if A was 1. So if our leading digit was 1. Okay. So if A is 2, then BC is going to have to be 24 divided by A. So that's 24 divided by 2, so that's 12.
So if B is 1, then C is 12, that's still no good. B is 2, C is 6, well, that's, that's a possibility. Hey, 2, 2, 6, that's one we've already seen. How about 3? Well, then it's 4. B is 4, then C is 3. If B is 6, then C is 2. And if B is 8, C is uh, 3 halves. And that's not even a single digit. So that one doesn't work, that one doesn't work. But the rest of these do. They give us numbers like 262 and 243 and 226, which we've already seen. That was given to us in the question, and 234. Okay. So we've done two of our possibilities for A. How about uh, A is 3? So for A is 3, B, C is going to have to be 8, because A, B, C needs to be 24. So A, which is 3, times B, C needs to be 24. Rearrange that, B, C is 24 divided by 3, or 8. Okay. So if B is 1, C is 8. That one works. If uh, B is 2, C is 4, that works. B is 3, that C is 8 over 3, that doesn't work. If B is 4, C is 2. B is 6, then C is 4 thirds, that doesn't work. And if B is 8, C is 1. Okay, so I'm noticing a pattern actually that in each instance, no matter what A we choose, we always get uh, four possibilities for B and C, and two that don't work out. So four valid possibilities out of the six, because there's two that don't work. So that's 318, uh, 324, 342, and 381. And you'll notice that uh, we're seeing a lot of the, the same sets of three numbers repeated. Okay, so we could just say, well, one of the digits being one, one of the digits being three, one of the digits being eight, that'll definitely give us the product we want. So how many three-digit numbers have a one, a three, and an eight? So we can approach the problem that way, but uh, it's a little less methodical, because how do you know you won't have a set of three numbers that gives you 24 that uh, you've missed? Doing it this way, specifying the first digit, then the next digit, then the last digit, this is my preferred method of doing this because I know I'm going to get everything I need. Okay, So if A is 4, then that means BC is 24 divided by 4, so that's 6. So if B is 1, C is 6. If B is 2, then C is 3. We're going to have to flip over to a brand new page. If uh, B is 3, C is 2, B is 4, we have a problem, if B is 6, C is 1, and if B is 8, then C is 3 quarters. So once again, we have 2 that don't work, and 2 that do. And we can write out their three-digit numbers. You don't have to. The question isn't asking you to write them all out. The question is just asking you to add up how many of them there are. But we write them out just to make sure we don't have any duplicates. Make sure that our method really does work. It gives each number that we want exactly once. Okay. 432. And 461. Okay. So we only have two more to go, A equals 6 and uh, A equals 8. We'll do A equals 8 over here. So that means BC is 4, and over here that means BC is 3. So B could be 1, B could be 2, B could be 3, although we know it won't be because 3 is not a factor of 4. Six. Eight. Oh my. So this time we'll actually have three that don't work. Interesting. Uh, B is one. B is two. Three. 
4, 6, and B is 8. So that would be C is 3, C is 3 halves, which is 1.5, C is 1, C is 3 quarters, C is 1 half, or C is 3 eighths. And over here we'd have C is 4, C is 2, C is 4 thirds, C is 1, C is 2 thirds, C is one half. So let's just go through. Well, which of those gave us a good answer for C? Not as many as we've seen in the past. So that's eight one three, eight three one, six one four, six two two, and six four one. Now the question asked us, if I recall, how many three-digit positive integers have a product who is, that is 24? So our method was, uh, well, methodical, very straightforward, very logical. There's no way we could have missed one, right? Imagine for a moment that we missed one, okay? What would the leading digit of that uh, three-digit number be? Could it be one? Well, no, we, we dealt with one. Could it be two? No, we did the two case, three, four, six, eight. We went through all the possible cases with leading ones, and in each case figured out what the next two digits could be. Okay? So we have to have a little faith in our method, but we can also do a mental check. Like, yeah, yeah, that should have all worked out. And by writing out uh, each uh, three-digit number when we got it, we could actually compare and make sure we had no overlaps. Although, again, you can probably convince yourself that the way we did this there won't be any overlaps. Okay? So let's count them up. Let's figure out how many there actually were. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On to the, the second page here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's the first two pages done. 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we had 21 total. So let's just uh, check and make sure that's one of the possible answers. If not, maybe our method doesn't work as well as we thought it does. But we find 21 here at the end. E is 21. And we have even more confidence in our answer at this point. Because we've beaten 4, 12, 18. So we know that there are at least 21. So we know the answer should either be E21, the one we got, or C24. So at this point, we've actually narrowed it down to a 50-50 guess, just knowing that there are 21 of them. Okay. Now, if we have a little faith in our method, which we should, because we've thought about it, we should know that there aren't actually going to be any more. So C equals 24. That's just there to fool anyone who guesses the highest possible number. Okay. So E21, that should be our final answer. Okay. So let's look exactly how we, uh, how we solved this question here. We took a look at it. We said we need a three-digit number. So, that's, so we gave names to the digits. We don't know what they are. We don't know. We, we're given a couple examples, but we don't know what these numbers should be. And then we were able to rule out, for example, zero. And the other piece of information, we need a three-digit number, so that means A, B, C, but we also need the product to be 24. So A times B times C is 24. And from there, we can narrow down our list of possible digits even further. We know seven's out, five's out, nine's out, because five times, you know, if A is five, whatever B and C are, we're going to have a multiple of five, and 24 is not a multiple of five. Okay, so the way we worked this out, we wrote out one piece of information, the three-digit part. We combined it with the other piece of information and that narrowed down our A, B, and C. So much so that we thought, well, hey, we could probably just do this methodically. Each uh, case, uh, you know, take them one at a time. A could be one, A could be two, A could be three. 
and from there, using that the, the product still has to be 24, we can figure out possibilities for B and C, and we might make a nice list here. Okay, so that's how we went about solving that one. Okay, and uh, well, that does it. That wraps up the 2002 Grade 7 Gauss paper. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, if you want to leave a comment, if there was a particularly tricky question, you know, maybe other people can provide insight that maybe my videos didn't. Or, uh, you know, if you actually want to figure it out, that's five marks or five points for Part A, six uh, marks for Part B, and eight marks for a correct answer in Part C. Don't forget two marks if you left a question blank up to the first uh, 20 marks gained this way. And maybe post a comment as to uh, how well you did. We'll see how uh, you stack up against uh, other people watching these videos. But until the next Gauss paper, you know, be it maybe the grade 7 Gauss for 2003 or maybe the grade 8 Gauss for this year, uh, I'll see you guys uh, in, in those videos in the future. So thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be.